As technology advances in this century, eventually, most productivity will probably become software mediated. Software could very well be the final industrial revolution. For example, cars and trucks will soon be driven by software. 3D printers will turn out manufactured goods. Automated heavy equipment will mine natural resources and robots will care for the elderly. One would assume that soon technology will make things so inexpensive that people wouldn't need to worry about money, jobs, wealth disparities, or old age. But in his new book, Who Owns the Future? The Father of Virtual Reality, Jaron Lanier, computer scientist and computer philosophy writer, is doubtful such a neat picture will unfold. Instead, he believes if we go on as we are, we will probably enter into a period of hyper unemployment and the attendant social chaos. We must learn to see the full picture and not just the treats before our eyes. Our trendy gadgets such as smartphones and tablets have given us access to a whole new world. Siren servers, as Lanyard calls them, are a new class of ultra influential computers and they come in many costumes. Some run financial schemes, such as high frequency trading, and others run insurance companies. Some run elections, and others run giant online stores. Some run social network or search services, while others run national intelligence services. The differences are only skin deep. The motivation for the siren server is that it leads to marginally effective behavioral models, both of the inanimate phenomena, such as financial events, and of human beings. These models are far from perfect, but just barely good enough to predict and manipulate people gradually over time, shaping taste and consumption in even more effective and insidious ways than subliminal advertisement could supposedly do. Manipulation might take the form of paid links appearing in free online services, an automatically personalized pitch for a candidate in an election, or perfectly targeted offers of credit. While people are rarely focused to accept the influence of siren servers in any particular case, on a broad statistical basis, it becomes impossible for a population to do anything but acquiesce over time. This is why companies like Google are so valuable. While no particular Google ad is guaranteed to work, the overall Google ad scheme by definition must work at least for a while, because of the laws of statistics. Superior computation lets a siren server enjoy the magical benefits of reliably manipulating others. Once this principle is understood, the seeming contradiction that power is being more and less concentrated at the same time melts away. An old-fashioned exercise in power, such as censoring social network expression, would reduce the new kind of power, which is to be a private spying service on people who use social networking. The only way to sell a loss of freedom so that people will accept it voluntarily is by making it look like a great bargain at first. Consumers were offered free stuff, such as web searches and social networking, in exchange for acquiescing to be spied upon. The only power a consumer has is to look for a better deal. The only way to say no to that deal is to transcend the role of consumer once in a while. To be free is to have a zone around you that is private, where you could be with your own thoughts, your own experiments for a time between confrontations with the larger world. When you are wearing sensors on your body all the time, such as the GPS and camera on your smartphone, and constantly piping data to a mega computer owned by a corporation that is paid by quote unquote advertisers to subtly manipulate you by tweaking the options immediately available to you, you gradually become less free. It's not just that you're making faraway people rich, even if you're not getting rich yourself, but that you are accepting an assault on your own free will, bit by bit. In order to make tech into something that empowers people, people have to be willing to act as if we can handle being powerful. If we demand free services in the present, we must also learn that we'll actually pay a price for them in the future, 
We must demand an information economy in which a rising tide raises all boats because the alternative is an unbounded concentration of power. A surveillance economy is neither sustainable nor democratic. So what's the solution? Lanier believes we should pay people for information gleaned from them if that info turns out to be valuable. If observation of you yields data that makes it easier for a robot to seem like a natural conversationalist or for a political campaign to target voters with its message, then the users ought to be paid for it. There is an amazing amount of value being generated by all of us in the form of data generated by the use of technology. But most of that value flows to the owners of the technology or what Lanyard calls the siren servers after the sirens of Ulysses. Only by breaking out of this quote unquote free information idea can a new middle class be sustained in a future economy. Lanyard puts forth an alternative structure to the web based on Ted Nelson's project Xanadu. He proposes a two-way linking system that would point to the source of any piece of information, creating an economy of micropayments that compensate people for original material they post to the web. For more information, check out the book Who Owns the Future by Jaron Lanyard.